Maggie and Susan have disliked each other ever since childhood. And the reason for it wasn't the fact that they grew up in completely different families, and thus could be rivals, even in theory. The cousins met only during the summer vacation, when their grandparents invited all of their relatives to their farm in Ohio. It was the best time, which every child remembered with a special warmth. Sitting at the big dining table, the grandparents loved telling the grandchildren about their past and what they had to go through to become wealthy people. Dorothy and Henry Hughes started working at a young age, and thanks to their determination and perseverance, they became successful in raising cattle and poultry in record time. Almost every resident in the city knew the couple, and whenever they came across them, they made a point to show their respect. However, age always takes its toll sooner or later, and therefore, Dorothy and Harry had to reduce the number of livestock they kept and abandon poultry breeding. They lived in perfect harmony for almost 35 years, raising two beautiful daughters, Penelope and Darcy. The girls were born just one year apart, and having barely reached adulthood, they left for the big city. Over time, Penelope and Darcy got married and had beautiful daughters, with an age difference of a couple of years. Friends of the Hughes family chuckled, assuming that the family would probably never have male heirs. But Dorothy and Harry weren't the kind of people that could get upset over something so unimportant. The elderly spouses equally loved both granddaughters, who looked very similar, but had very different characters and mindsets nonetheless. Maggie was a headstrong and somewhat unethical person who could do anything in order to achieve her goals. Meanwhile, Susan was more of a vulnerable and modest person. In order not to incite conflict between their granddaughters, Harry and Dorothy always tried to give them the same gifts. But somehow, Maggie still managed to always trick her cousin and take away her doll or the brand new dress. At first, it looked like childish pranks, but over time, Maggie's tricks became more sophisticated and hurtful. She often brought poor Susan to tears, and what's even worse, she was incredibly proud of it. Fortunately, the cousins only saw each other during the summer vacation. In between their meetings, Susan had time to forget her grievances, and then everything started all over again. But there were times when the cousin had to see each other more than once a year. That was the case when the family had to sell a lot of livestock after the grandfather's death and when they were renting out land for pasture. After that, the widow Dorothy Hughes shared the proceeds among her daughters and granddaughters. With their husband passed away, her life turned into a monotonous, joyless routine. The only ray of hope in the otherwise hopeless darkness of Dorothy's life were the visits of her granddaughters. The old woman felt much younger around them, and it even seemed that all her illnesses stepped aside when the girls were visiting. Time passed. Susan and Maggie grew up into young women. Thus, they could no longer spend their summers on the farm and help their grandmother take care of it. Maggie was exceptionally happy about it, saying, Why would I want to waste any time in this hole? I don't like milking cows and feeding poultry. This kind of life definitely isn't for me. Her mother Penelope shared this opinion and also didn't like visiting the family farm. Thus, Susan was the only one who cared about the farm, and so she tried to visit her grandmother almost every week. However, the two women became especially close after the death of Susan's mother. Poor Darcy died of cancer, the insidious disease that doesn't spare even the best of people. After her mother's death, Susan started spending all of her free time with her grandmother. She felt very sorry for the old woman, who did her best to maintain the house and the farm, despite her rapidly deteriorating health. Susan cared for her beloved grandmother by bringing her food and medicine, as well as helping around the house. Meanwhile, Dorothy Hughes always tried to pass along all kinds of gifts for Maggie, whom she hadn't seen in about two years. The fact was that the obstinate young woman was busy with her personal life and didn't feel like spending time with her grandmother. Of course, Mrs. Hughes understood everything without words and didn't hold a grudge against Maggie, who wasn't exactly kind or supportive towards her. After the death of her beloved husband, Harry, the woman's life was divided into parts when she was either alone or with her granddaughter, Susan. 
Sitting in the kitchen, Mrs. Hughes would often look reproachfully at the clock hanging on the wall, the hands of which seemed to freeze in one place. Deep down, the old woman hoped that Susan would come to visit her every day, even though she knew she could only do so on the weekends. At the same time, Dorothy Hughes tried not to complain to her granddaughter about her rapidly deteriorating health. But no detail escaped Susan's watchful eye. Grandma, maybe you should consider moving to the city after all. It's hard for you to live alone on the farm, the woman said. It's fine, dear. I've had a headache this morning. It must be my blood pressure again. But now that you're here, I'm feeling much better, Mrs. Hughes replied. But Susan knew perfectly well that it wasn't so. Trying to do as much as she could to help her grandma during her short visit, the woman spent most of the day on her feet. She fed the cattle, cooked dinner, and cleaned the house. Thus, Dorothy Hughes lived her life constantly waiting for Susan's next visit. Time passed. The old woman's health got worse with each passing day. It was already hard for her to keep the house in order. For the lonely old woman, it felt like she was living in a huge castle, which needed a full staff of servants to maintain an order. It was then that Mrs. Hughes started getting visits from her second granddaughter, Maggie. Unlike her cousin, she was always accompanied by some strange men who always took pictures of something and measured the area of the farm and its buildings noting down their measurements in a notebook. What are you up to, dear? Asked Dorothy Hughes anxiously. Nothing special, Grandma. I'm thinking of doing some renovations in the house, so I invited the construction crew to draw up the estimate. Maggie lied without batting an eye. In fact, she had long hatched a plan to sell the farm after her grandmother's death. For some reason, Maggie was sure that she would be the one to inherit the estate. She was confident that she could convince her grandmother to write up the will in her favor. Meanwhile, Maggie tried to visit the old woman on days when Susan wasn't around. Unfortunately, despite the care and help of her granddaughter, Dorothy Hughes died on a warm June morning, just a week before her 75th birthday. After it happened, Susan hurried to share this sad news with Maggie and her mother, Penelope. To the great disappointment of the grief-stricken woman, they took the news of the old woman's death with cold indifference, as if she had already been dead in their minds. Moreover, Susan's selfish relatives left her to deal with the funeral and the wake all on her own. Tears froze in the poor woman's eyes. Due to her age, it was very hard for Susan to pull herself together and start organizing the funeral. In the meantime, her far-sighted cousin was dealing with their inheritance. Maggie never saw her grandmother's will, but she was 100% sure that she would get the house and the farm. Or maybe there would be no will at all, which would greatly increase Maggie's chances of success. At the same time, the woman didn't care the least bit about the fact that Dorothy had another granddaughter who needed help just as much as she did. Why would she need so much money? She's so naive and silly. She's never even held more than a couple of hundred dollars in her hands. I need to persuade her to give up her share of grandma's house, Maggie thought, smiling at her own idea. But when the woman shared her plans with her cousin, Susan's indignation knew no bounds. How can you even think about selling our grandma's house and farm? You didn't even bother to come to her funeral, and now you're talking about the inheritance? Susan was furious. But Maggie's impotence had long been her main tool in achieving her goals. The obstinate woman didn't calm down until her cousin signed the document waiving her rights to Dorothy Hughes' house. Since there was still no will, this document allowed Maggie to become the sole owner of the house and the farm. A little later, Maggie convinced herself that the old woman didn't have time to make a will and decided to sell the house as soon as possible. Just then, Maggie found a good buyer who was ready to pay a significant amount for the house. The paperwork for the deal was done in record time, and when there were only a few hours left before the official sale, there was a knock on the door of Maggie's house. Having opened the door, the woman saw a man in a suit with a folder in his hands. Hello. I'm your grandmother's lawyer. Dorothy Hughes entrusted me with her will, the guest said politely. 
Well, come in. I'll make you some coffee. To be honest, I didn't even think that my grandmother had a well. Maggie said in surprise. Oh, no thanks. I won't be staying long. I'm just here to read your grandmother's will, so I won't be it around the bush. According to the will drawn up by Dorothy Hughes, the house and the adjacent farm goes to your cousin, Susan. The lawyer announced in a casual tone. What do you mean, Susan gets them? That's impossible. I was absolutely sure that I would inherit everything. Maggie exclaimed in shock. The lawyer only shrugged in response and showed Maggie a copy of the will. Then he said a polite goodbye and left Maggie's house. While Maggie was so mad, she couldn't get a grip of herself. However, no matter how angry she was, it was impossible to change the will of her late grandmother. Maggie was so busy trying to become rich that she didn't even realize that she ruined her relationship with her family. However, Dorothy Hughes was a smart woman who couldn't be easily deceived. She saw right through her cunning granddaughter and her insidious plan. Therefore, the old woman bequeathed everything to Susan, who looked after her not for the sake of money or inheritance, but because she truly loved and appreciated her. A month later, when Maggie picked up the courage to visit her grandmother's farm, she couldn't believe her eyes. Susan literally gave the farm a second life, and intending to revive its former greatness, enlisted the support of the local residents. Looking at her cousin's success, Maggie couldn't hold back her tears. Only now did the woman realize what a mistake she'd made. Dejectedly lowering her head, Maggie went to the bus stop, asking her late grandmother for forgiveness in her mind.